Oxfam have, have said that the donor nations have only pledged enough money to provide $3 for every flood affected person. And after the 2005 earthquake, it was $70 per person. And after the Haiti earthquake, it was $495 per, per person affected. So why do you think a response from the international community has been sluggish during this disaster? The shock value of an earthquake, uh, the visuals of an earthquake, are far more dramatic than the shock value of water, which is basically a very benign sort of an image, just lying there. The second thing is that the amount of money donated today, I think these figures are now a couple of days old. Uh, they're, they're not uh, valid today on the 25th of August. You have to divide whatever is being pledged by 20 million people. That's another thing. Now, I, uh, since I was not directly uh, involved in any aspect of the relief effort for Haiti, I do not know the number of people who were affected by uh, the earthquake, whereas the death toll must have been much higher. Mm -hmm. The overall number of people affected was much, much lower than 20 million. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. So when you do the division, naturally, the, the amount per head is going to be uh, different. But as I said, uh, on the 20th, in the aftermath of the uh, UN General Assembly session, I can tell you roughly that the pledges that have been made now are pushing, uh, I think, $900 million. Okay. And also the IMF and the World Bank have uh, assured the government of Pakistan that approximately already $1 billion has been, that is the figure that has been indicated, would be made available for infrastructure redevelopment. But still, uh, a lot more is going to be needed for the very simple reason that we have had two million acres of standing crops destroyed. We have had thousands and thousands of food storage, uh, uh, you know, silos which have been which have been inundated with water, and they have uh, all of that food stock has gone to waste. There are hundreds and thousands of cattle, chicken goats, sheep, cows, etc., which belong to these millions of poor people which have drowned. So you have, you are going to be faced in three months with a situation where perhaps 10 to 15 million people, a number of people will be able to go back to their homes. But we have got in excess of one and a half million homes which have been completely destroyed. Those people are not going home. And those people, the small farmer has lost his cow, he's lost his chicken, his land today cannot be tilled, he cannot grow anything on it, he doesn't even have seed. So a few of the initiatives that the government has just announced yesterday are that they're going to be distributing free seeds in the affected areas. They are talking about microfinancing for these people. They are talking about uh, assistance with uh, vaccination for animals, etc. if anybody has any left. So it's 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 going it's an evolving situation. It is so complex that even if you discuss uh, you know Pakistan's flood response with uh, international charities which have been doing work all around the world, I have had a word with them. What they say is we really don't know where to begin because it is just a, such a phenomenally complex situation. Um, do you think that the international community's sort of slow response to this disaster and maybe the government's slow response as well, do you think that leaves an opening for fundamentalists to gain popular support? See, when you're starving or if your child needs medicine and you have lost your home, you're living in a camp somewhere or even worse, you're on a patch of land surrounded by dirty water, even you and I would not care where the help comes from as long as you get the help, as long as you get the food. This is a definite concern. Pakistan has been, because of its uh, geostrategic location, it has been at the forefront of the international war against terror. Uh, forces, security forces, our military forces, they have lost thousands of, of lives uh, while performing heroic duties under very, very difficult circumstances over the last four or five years. These elements will definitely try and win hearts and minds by providing relief to the displaced and to the hungry and to the poor. And this is 
one of the reasons why definitely I feel the international community has a very big stake in coming forward to help Pakistan, help its people, because already uh, there have been reports that you know certain miscreants and um, terrorist elements have on occasion found a bit of sympathy and support in local uh, populations. If they are able to fill the vacuum or to fill the gap which is left between the government's delivery of assistance and what is required, then definitely uh, these people would be able to gain some ground. So it is essential that it is very obvious to the people in need that it is the government of Pakistan which is helping them and that it is the friends of the government of Pakistan and the friends of the people of Pakistan from all over the world, including the Western nations, which are stepping in to assist them at this time of need. Do you think that that international perception of Pakistan has coloured or, or influenced the response in this, in this disaster? Again, I think that <clears throat> we live hopefully in a humane world today. And anybody seeing the images on television, whether you're living in Germany, whether you're living in Australia, whether you're living in Canada, or wherever it may be, as a human being, looking at those images, you know that the right thing to do is to help. And I go back to my point about uh, keeping the issue alive. I would really, you know, if I could, I would appeal to the international media, which has to purely from a humanitarian point of view. This is, I would say this is not even about Pakistan, this is about saving human lives. They're human beings. Those are starving children. Those are innocent, poor people who need food to survive. This is what it's all about. It is, it, it's a humanitarian issue. And we are all members of, of, of you know, one big family living on this globe. And as a fellow man, uh, anybody living anywhere in the world would be concerned about uh, the plight of these poor people. So just, just my closing question, you've touched on this before, but um, despite the image that Pakistan has in the West, um, for Pakistanis living abroad like, like us, are, when we see this destruction on these images, our, our hearts and our minds bleed for the many millions of people who have been affected. Um, but living abroad, how do you think that we can change the image of us and, and help it become sort of a respectable country, uh, the image in, in the world community? Well, right now, obviously, the image which is being flashed uh, across media channels and in newspapers is of flood and devastation, which is not a very pleasant thing. But Pakistan has a, a lot to be proud of. We have good sports teams. Beautiful country. We are a very welcoming people. Uh, anybody, any any Western friend of mine who's ever been to Pakistan has always come back delighted with the hospitality that they have received over there. Our uh, produce, natural produce, is very very good. We produce lots of nice fruits, wheat, etc. So the image has taken uh, a battering through no fault of our own, just because we have been fighting extreme. We have been fighting militants, and those critics who say that we have not are so totally incorrect. Because I put it to you, why would the Pakistani security forces be bombed by these extremists? Why would they be attacked by the extremists? Why would we have suicide attacks on the officers of our security agencies if we were not actively rooting them out? It is because our security forces, it is because our military, it is because our police, it is because our intelligence agencies are doing their utmost to track down and to control and to root out these uh, extremists and these fundamentalists who are hell-bent on mayhem that they in response are being attacked by these same very people. So obviously the image of bombs going off, suicide, uh, attacks, uh, targeted killings, etc. These are unpleasant things and uh, we can only hope and pray that the sooner we get out of this very difficult phase of battling with these extremists and things settle down and we have peace, we can carry on with the uh, ta real task of uh, socio-economic development in Pakistan.